Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I have some dry Hawthorne fingering weight yarn which is 80% superwash fine highland wool, 20% polyamide and I have a dye bath here that started off with 16 cups of water, 4 tablespoons of white vinegar, and one cup of a 1% stock solution of Jacquard Sky Blue. Now I've already dyed 100 grams of yarn and have used up most of the dye that's in the pot. But you know me, and now I can't leave any dye behind, so I thought it would be fun to toss some, uh, <laughs> some dry Hawthorne into the pot to get to use up this leftover dye. And one of the benefits of adding yarn dry is that you will get some kettle dyed quality to it. You will get some tonal variations of color. And after the initial dip, we've got sort of this Actually, it's a very sky blue type color. I'm not sure what this, did I get it? Floaty is. Let's set that aside. Okay. But slowly, we should be able to absorb most of the residual color. And we're getting really nice, like, pastel baby blue. The acid is sort of moderate in this pot. It's not really a high acid situation, nor is it a low acid. But, yeah, I would actually call this a really lovely sky blue color. I, I personally am a huge fan of deep saturated colors. That's a reason why I added a whole cup of the sky blue dye into the pot to begin with. But I also think that there is some value in pastels. And it's nice when we see a somewhat exhausted dye pot, exactly how much dye is left. So maybe you get a sense of, if I had put the whole project in, into the pot, would the amount of color left made a huge difference on my project or not? And in this just short time that I've been talking, I think that we've basically, yeah, we have exhausted that color. And you can see that the color that we got is not as bright as my tongs, but yeah, it's a beautiful, and actually with some of the lighter patches, it really does look like a part, like a, you know, a sky with maybe some hints of clouds in it. At this point, I'm going to turn off the pot, or turn off the heat entirely, and go ahead and let this yarn sit in here for about five minutes or so. Um, I don't think it's entirely necessary, but I think that this will help. If there's any more color left in here, it'll help it bind, and yeah, so I'll come back in about five minutes. As for that floaty bit, it doesn't seem... Maybe it looks like a bit of paper or something, so it doesn't seem to be like transferring. It's not like a dye glob. But anyway, I was curious about it. The five minutes have passed, and I'm now going to pick up our yarn and remove it from the dye bath. And place it into a dedicated commercial dye pan. Now, for comparison's sake, here is the dye that we just dyed, and here <laughs> is the dye that we, the yarn that we dyed using all of the dye. Um, now granted these are two different yarn bases, but you can see that we did get a real significant hue change um, in, a different, in addition to just a paler color. Like I feel like that the the Hawthorne we just dyed has way more of a gray sort of undertone to it than this bright blue wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn. But nevertheless, I'm gonna let it cool completely and then we will wash it. Let's wash our cooled off yarn. You all know by now that 
I, I love dyeing iron with blue color. But it is so nice to get a hue like this with acid dyes. I mean, I think this is just a blue that I don't really see with food coloring, just in terms of the fact that uh, blue number one is a brighter blue um, and a, leans a little more electric than this. And so you can get a pale color. It's just, yeah, something about this just gets me really, really happy. Um, I'm now adding some clear disco just to help rinse out anything extra. Uh, someone recently asked me why I use clear dish soap, and that's because I like to be able to see and show on the video if any bleeding is happening. And sometimes if I'm using blue or green soap, um, that gives the water a tint and makes it harder to see. But anyway, this water is clear. All of our dye is in the yarn. And so I am going to finish rinsing out the soap and then go hang up the yarn to dry. Here is our finished tonal sky blue yarn. I'm not really good at assigning color names, but I think that I might call this a cloudy day. Well, I mean, maybe that invokes that invokes uh, something gray, but maybe it's like a partly sunny day um, or partly cloudy day because you've got the bright blue sky with little wisps of clouds through it. I love adding dry yarn to a pot. I think it's a nice way to exaggerate some of these tonal qualities. If you want to get a kettle dyed yarn and have it be even more subtle than what we have here, pre-soak your yarn ahead of time. You will still get some uneven color absorption, but it will be able to have it be a bit more even than what we did here today. And if you want the tonal pattern to be a little less random, instead of tossing it in at, like I did, you could dip your yarn quickly into the pot, but starting at one end, and then you'll end up with more of a gradient, a regular repeating type gradient versus um, a more random tonal. I really enjoy dyeing this Hawthorne yarn base. And I think that there's a reason why Knit Picks has picked it as the yarn that they want to use for their Sock Lab um, experimental limited edition colorways. It takes up dye beautifully, and this sort of rustic two ply I think will have amazing stitch definition to really show off a variegated yarn to the biggest advantage possible while also being beautiful for a more subtle colorway like this one. If you would like to pick up some Bear Hawthorne yarn to try this out for yourself, you can find my affiliate link in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. This way, you won't miss a video. I release at least two new dyeing videos every week, um, and I love to play around with color. I also do frequent live streams, which include unboxings and even some really long dyeing adventures where you can hang out with me in my kitchen as I am adding color to yarn. And in all of these, it's a great opportunity to ask me questions um, because I am here to teach and inspire you to hopefully try this out yourself. Thank you so much for watching.